Yeah, uh, you heard it right. It is not over yet. What is not over? Um, I, I guess you understand what I'm talking about. I'm talking about worship. It is not over. Not because Ramadan is over. So worship is over. Fasting is not over. Hajjud is not over. Charity is not over. Nothing is really over. As long as uh, we're still breathing, and that's why you find in Surah Al Najm, the Almighty Allah is commanding His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and obviously this command is uh, uh, for the entire Ummah. وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينُ Worship your Lord until Al Yaqeen comes to you, and Al Yaqeen refers to death. So. Worship is not seasonal. Fasting isn't seasonal. The prayers are not seasonal. Likewise, the charity. Yes, indeed, there are some seasons during which we give it a push. We work harder, we work more than regular times. But in reality, as the ayah says, also, brothers and sisters, the surah which we all know very well, surah al-sharh, in which Allah was addressing Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is saying, Alam ashrah laka sadra. He said, Fa'idha faradta fansad, wa ila rabbika farad. So, once you're finished with an act of worship, prepare for a new one. It's not over. Because it's obvious that many of us slow down and many others they calm down and many others they simply quit it was like you know it wasn't uh, Satan actually which was chained it was there they were chained and after Ramadan they are they got loose uh, it shouldn't be this way whatsoever Alhamdulillah happy Eid to all of you yes Sayyid Mubarak you and your families so I hope you enjoyed your Eid I know that the Ummah was divided with regards to the moon citation but that is perfectly okay this is not really the thing which will divide the Ummah uh, as far as you know the unity the moon citation and whether they celebrated Eid a day before or after that's based on the moon citation Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah we still uh, hold on to perfect, beautiful memories of Ramadan, and I hope that would last with us, uh, inshallah, until next Ramadan. Okay? Um, so, what to do next? As today in many countries is actually the second day of the month of Shawwal, and the day is over. In other countries it is the third day and for people who are flying like me they're in between <laughs> between the second and the third alhamdulillah um, what is next what are we going to do next let me begin with what is important uh, the most important duty now is to remember that the messenger of allah peace be upon him said in the sound hadith whoever observes the fasting of ramadan so if you fast during Ramadan, then you succeed that by fasting six days during the following month, which is uh, Shawwal, that which we are in currently. The reward for such deed, fasting the whole month of Ramadan, and uh, six days during the month of Shawwal, is similar to the reward of fasting for an entire year. Based on what? How do we calculate that? Can we take a sip of drink? But before I drink, you know, since we're traveling, so I'm not fasting. Secondly, I'm using my right hand. I swear to God, I'm using my right hand. So I don't want anyone to say that, oh, how come you're drinking with your left hand? Because the camera is, you know, backward. The front camera is been that.
Alhamdulillah. Okay. So the idea of fasting, Ashura is that may Allah bless you and your kids, may Allah bless you and your family. The idea behind, uh, you know, the word uh, for fasting six days after Ramadan is equivalent to fasting for the word Ad-Dahr. Ad-Dahr in the hadith refers to one complete lunar year. While the word Dahr in general refers to the entire lifetime, the lifespan of any individual. So here, since Allah said in Surah Al-An'am, Man jaa'a bil hasanati falahu ashru amthaliha. Whoever does, whoever brings a good deed, a single good deed, falahu ashru amthaliha. For him or her, the reward is ten times more. <coughs> ten times more. Great. So the month of Ramadan, 30 days, multiply it by 10, that is 300. And six days of Shawwal times 10, that is 60. No, no, 360. So even though Omud fast is just one month, which is Ramadan, and uh, another six days of the month of Shawwal, that is a month and six days, correct? We're talking about five weeks maximum, but the reward for such fasting is equivalent to the reward of a person who has been fasting on every single day throughout the year. Great. Based on the previous calculation, that Al Hasana to be Ashram Thariha. And furthermore, if you do that on a regular basis every year, so the reward would be like a person who's fasting every single year for the entire year and annually you have a person who's fasting entirely on every single day because the almighty allah does not compensate like you know human beings good for good and bad for bad no and hasana to be ashri and this is the least the least a single good deed is a word that ten times more Alhamdulillah, Allah is most generous. And also, uh, with regards to the fiqh ruling of the fasting of those six days, uh, you can begin as early as the second day of Shawwal because the Eid al Fitr this morning uh, we were praying, and one of the followers, uh, soon after the prayer, started making takbir out loud. Then he just realized that what? No one else is joining me. So, the uh, I basically I was leading the prayer, so I had to speak to the public and I say that Eid al Fitr is only one day, versus Eid al Adha is four days, the first day and Ayyam al Tashriq. So Eid al Fitr is only one day, which means if you want to fast the six days of Shawwal, you can begin as the second day because Eid is over. While in the case of Eid al-Adha, it's four days, and it's haram, forbidden to fast during the Eid days. So if you want to begin fasting today, if you are in some of those countries which uh, you have not started the second day yet, or uh, if you have forgotten, maybe inshallah, uh, you begin tomorrow. And by the way, it doesn't have to be consented. You can just fast uh, every other day, or couple days a week, Mondays and Thursdays. If you're a person who normally observes fasting on Mondays and Thursdays, and uh, you happen to fast on the six days, on Mondays and Thursdays, you, you still get double reward for observing your Ada, for usual fasting, and fasting the six days of Shawwal. But the question is, a lot of sisters, of course, who have this good fasting to the menses, can they make up their fasting and meanwhile they intend to fast the six days of Shawwal like do what intention? Well, the answer is can you guess the answer first? Can you guess the answer? I know by now you're all shiuch, mashallah. You know very well. I'll give you a chance to guess the answer. Anyone 
grass. Well, since making up the missed days of Ramadan is fard, isn't it? Because it was mandatory to fast the other Ramadan, so if you missed it, you make it up. That's mandatory. Then, fasting the six days of Shawwal is so long. You cannot have dual intentions on the same day because this is fard and this is so long. It's like, uh, thank you. It's like, okay, we we'll pray Dhuhr for Rakas and we we'll pray Sunnah before for Rakas and Sunnah after for Rakas. What about if I pray just for Rakas with the intention of, you know what, I'm just praying two at the same time before Rakas is Sunnah, before Dhuhr or after Dhuhr, and the four Rakas of Dhuhr. Would that work? Nope. So that's simple. No. And obviously, if you have a chance. If you have a chance to make up the missed days of Ramadan first, that is the ideal scenario. To make up the missed days because this is mandatory. Okay? Then, after making up the missed days, you have six days of Shawwal. But, to make it easy for you, some sisters, some brothers who have been traveling a lot like me, but you know, fasting while traveling, in the case of Ramadan, uh, you have the choice to break your fast or to continue fasting. So if you happen to break your fast and you owe a certain number of days and you want to make them up, it should be made up before fasting the recommended fasting. If it was something like too much to do both in a month of Shawwal, like one sister had, Menses for 10 days, and uh, she wants to fast the six days of Shawwal. So, if she wants to do both, that literally means that she has to fast on every other day, every other day, every other day. It can be a burden, something, and maybe she will not be able to make a whole thing. So, in this case, it's okay to begin by making the sunnah, provided, of course, that you make up the best days once you can. Due to the fact that Aisha radiallahu anha narrated that, okay, Muhammad Ali says he cannot hear. I wonder if you all can hear clearly or anyone else is having a problem. I'd like to confirm before we continue. Can you all hear me? <coughs> Can you all hear me? <laughs> Alright, okay, perfect. So, anyway, okay, maybe Muhammad, you need to check. Uh, yeah, it's low, it's okay, but as long as it is, you know, audible and you can hear it. Good morning, Great. ladies and gentlemen. I'll be member of Starlight. You heard the we announcement clearer, of course, because we do apologize for the lady the is louder than me. Due to the accomplishment you know? of uh, some uh, technical procedure. Thank you. Okay. So we begin by making up the missed days. Then, inshallah, we we'll have the six days of Shawwal every other day or whenever we have a chance. Um, if you think that the period is too much to afford to fast them all in the same month, then it's okay to begin with fasting the six days. Aisha radiallahu has said that uh, uh, that she used to make up her missed days of Ramadan next year in Chaban, yani a few days before Ramadan. Barakallahu Another, uh, you know, advice before we wrap it up, inshallah. Uh, why most people tend to slow down or even to quit their worship because the first and second day uh, of Eid, we're busy receiving guests, we're preparing the food, we're going out, we're inviting people, we're worn out physically. That is expected. 
and also during the last 10 nights of Ramadan particularly there was zero sleep and we were busy with the worship so now we rest but it doesn't mean we quit we've taken a break alhamdulillah a day two three keep something that you can afford to do on a regular basis so do not ever miss the wit prayer under any circumstances, even if you're troubled. If you add to that, maybe a couple of rakahs, four rakahs, six rakahs, even a short surahs, that would be highly appreciated. You know, my kids, your kids, a lot of people are competing with the rest to finish in the Quran, how many times, and so on. So now, um, Ramadan is over, and I know that uh, many people would abandon the Quran for, for so long. Uh, why don't we do as the Prophet said when he said, the best deed to Allah is the one which is consistent even if it is little. It doesn't matter how much, but what matters is you do it on a regular basis. So why don't we agree to recite like Hebrews every day? If you recite Hebrews every day, you finish the Quran every two months, if you're a slow reader. And every person should finish it once a month by reciting one part every day. That is 20 minutes. That is 20 minutes a day, which is not much, okay? I think uh, we need to wrap it up, but inshallah, I'd like to tell you that um, Inshallah, inshallah, we resume as for the, uh, the regular schedule, Sundays and Tuesdays of every week. It will be at 9 p.m. Mecca time, also Gardens of the Pious. It's a plenary of the Salihin by Imam Nawawi. May Allah have mercy on him on Mondays and Wednesdays, same time of every week. And finally, correct recitation. It will be on Thursday, same time, inshallah. May Allah grant us all forgiveness. May Allah forgive us our sins and accept our fasting, our prayers, and our worship. Uh, love you all for the sake of Allah. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Happy Eid to you and to your families. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.